Breakfast time. Did you get Jody's breakfast? Oatmeal and raisins, like always. She loves her oatmeal. Yeah, she certainly does. I see you're starting a new project. What's it going to be this time? It's a sweater for Jody. Thought so. It's her favorite color. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Allison, do you remember the nurse we discussed? The nurse for Jody? Yeah. Michael, I told you, I can take care of Jody myself. I know, I know, but Dr. Turner thinks it would be best if we just... Michael, please. He thinks it would be best for Jody. And that's what we both want, isn't it? What's best for Jody? Allison? Isn't it? Yes. Good. The nurse is coming today. Today? Yes, her name is Mrs. Randolph. Is she going to live here with us? For a while, till things get a little better. Jody's not going to like her. I think she'll be very helpful. And then maybe I can get back to work. And leave us here alone with her? Let's just give it a chance, okay? Let's see what happens. Allison? Okay? Okay. $50 fare from the airport? Lady, it's 25 miles. $2 a mile. Mrs. Randolph? Yes. Am I being overcharged? I'll take care of it. See some piece of work. I wouldn't tip him. He doesn't deserve it. Thanks for your trouble. Thanks, ma'am. Good luck. Michael Overton. Something wrong, Mr. Overton? You're not quite what I expected. What did you expect? You're very young. I'm qualified for the job. Dr. Turner said your qualifications were excellent. But you disagree? I just expected someone with more experience. I've been a psychiatric nurse for six years, and I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I I'm sorry. You just don't look like a Mrs. Randolph to me. I was expecting 
an older person, maybe a semi-retired widow or something. If, in your opinion, I'm unsuitable, then I'll leave. No, I don't. On the other hand, if I don't fit your image of a Mrs. Randolph, then why don't you just call me Catherine and let's get on with it? Okay, Catherine. Let me show you your room. Thank you. It's up the stairs. Turn right at the top, it's at the end of the hall. Hope you like it. It'll do. We had the entire house remodeled last year. It's my parents' place. I inherited it after my father died. When was that? A couple years ago. I see. I'm looking forward to meeting your wife. She thinks you're here to take care of our daughter. Jody. Yes. Jody. You know the situation? Of course. I'd, uh, like to change first. Will you wear a nurse's uniform or something? No, but I brought one in this case. It's appropriate. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to get started. We'll be downstairs in the living room if you need us. Allison. Allie, the nurse is here. Did you say something, Michael? I said the nurse is here. Oh. She's very good. Is she? She has excellent qualifications. Jody's not going to like her. She's going to be afraid of her, and she's not going to like her. Have a seat. You have a beautiful house. It was my family's farmhouse, but we don't do any farming anymore. So, uh, have you spent much time in the country before? No, not really. Well, you're in for quite an experience. And at first, you're going to miss all the noise and the hubbub, but. It's a lovely place, but I'm not here for a vacation, Mr. Overton. I, I understand that. This is the first time we've had a stranger come live with us. I know exactly how you feel. When I was a little girl, we had to have a nurse live in our house to take care of my mother who had suffered a stroke. How horrible. Yes, but out of bad things, good things can come. That's what made me decide to become a nurse. I saw the tremendous good you can do for other people if they'll let you. We will. Won't we, Michael? Well, yes. Yes, of course we will. I'm glad to hear that. I'd like to talk to you about Jody and what happened. Perhaps you could excuse us for a few minutes, Mr. Overton? No. Sure, if that's okay with you, honey. Of course. It's all right, Michael. I'm going to bed now. You and Catherine finish your talk? She was tired. She had a long day. So where is she now? I don't know. In a room, I suppose. She didn't want to speak to me first? 
No. So how was it? How was what? Your talk with Catherine. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So does that mean that you're happy that she's here? Of course I'm happy, Michael. Why wouldn't I be happy to have professional help for Jody? But I thought... I mean... It's very good, honey. It's the right attitude. You know, if this works out, I may be able to go back to work sooner than I thought. That'd be fine. I thought you had a problem with me leaving you. I think it would be good for you to go back to work. Don't forget to say goodnight to Jody. I won't. I didn't hear you say goodnight to Jody. I think she's asleep. I didn't want to disturb her. She's awake. I heard her right before you came in. <sighs> okay, I'll be right back. Good night, Jody. Have good dreams. I thought you were still sleeping. I've been going over your wife's medication. And I think that using Valium as a depressant and Secondol as a sleeping pill is overkill. Ideally, we should wean her off of all medication. It's more like a doctor's decision, don't you think? I will consult with Dr. Turner on this, of course. Is she awake? No. She sleeps late most mornings. By the time I bring her breakfast up, she's usually awake. That's a mistake. What is? You're keeping her too comfortable and secure in her condition. We need to bring her out to a more active and self-rewarding existence. I take it you didn't always make breakfast. There's a number of things I do now that I didn't do before. 
Allison hasn't cooked or baked a thing since Jody. Since the accident. Your wife is desperately holding on to the past. But by you doing things that you never did before, you're helping her to create an unreal world. A world of illusion where she doesn't do the things she did before and is actually losing her grip on the past. Makes sense. I wonder why Dr. Turner never put it that way. Just trust me, please. I have a lot of experience with people in her state of mind. We need to change things, starting now. You're not intending to do anything shocking, are you? No. Just go upstairs and tell her it's time we all had breakfast. It might be too abrupt. It's not too abrupt. She'll understand that you have a stranger in the house and you want to make a good impression. The mornings are always the worst. The depression, it's overbearing. Do you want me to do it? No. I'll do it. Good. Tell her that I'd like to discuss Jody's breakfast. Allison. The nurse is down in the kitchen and she wants breakfast. She wants to discuss Jody's breakfast with you. Jody's breakfast? I think you better handle this. Yes. Good morning. Sorry I slept so late. Yes, well, we have to get on a schedule, so it's best we start right away. Okay. You can go upstairs and get dressed, Mr. Overton. We'll call you when we're ready. Well, go on, Michael. Michael. All right. What's up? Allison wants you to do that later. Why? I'm almost finished and it's supposed to rain. It would be really helpful to me if you could do it later. What possible difference could it make? Jody's trying to take a nap and you're keeping her awake. What are you doing? Shh, lower your voice. I told Allison that I'd give Jody a sponge bath. In the beginning, it's going to be very important for me and for you to follow through and do the things we say we're going to do. I have to win her complete confidence. You understand that? Yeah, of course. Um, after you shower and change, I have a list of groceries I want you to get. We don't need anything. I went shopping yesterday.
Hi, Mrs. Greenstreet. I know I don't have an appointment, but I really need to speak with Dr. Turner for just a minute. He's with a patient. Well, can I wait? He's got a very tight schedule. I'll just be a few minutes. He's due at the state hospital immediately after this appointment, and he's running late. It's important that I see him very briefly. Is this an emergency? Is your wife with you? No. I just came from... Then perhaps I can schedule an appointment for you. No, look. It is an emergency. I really need to talk to him. Please have a seat. And when he's through with his session, I'll ask when he can see you. Thank you. looking at Mr. Olkin insisted on seeing you. I told him you were fully booked, but he said it's an emergency. I'm sorry. It's okay, Michael. Come on in. Wrong, Michael. I'm sorry. It's it's really not an emergency. Just the only way I could get Mrs. Greenstreet to agree to let me stay. She tries to keep me on schedule. So, what's up? Well, the therapist has arrived. I know. She called me. Oh, she did. Well, she never told me. She was critical of Allison's medication. We did discuss it. But now that she's there, then I think we stand a good chance of getting Allison off some of the drugs. Then you agree with her? You don't? I didn't think she was qualified to make those decisions. But I didn't want to appear critical of her either. I understand. She is very experienced dealing with people in trauma. How does Alison feel about her? Oh, much better than I expected. Well, that's a good thing, then. Well... I suppose. You don't like her, is that it? No, it's not that I don't like her. Has there been some kind of problem? Mm. Her methods seem unorthodox. How so? Well, she's very authoritarian, for one thing. She's virtually bossing me around in my own house. <laughs> yes. Catherine is used to a lot of responsibility. She was a head nurse at a very young age. She is extremely intelligent, you know. Although her name is Mrs. Randolph, I get the feeling she no longer has a husband. Divorced quite recently. Ah. I guess she's better at solving other people's problems than her own. The failure of a partnership should not be a condemnation of the people involved, Michael. Sometimes... Things are just not meant to be. Of course. I don't know why I said that. Is there anything else? Yes. The most important point, actually. She seems to be humoring Allison too much. Humoring her? Yeah. I guess I expected her to be dealing in reality, but... She just seems to be fostering the illusion. I mean, I just think she's going about it all wrong. Well, she is very experienced at this sort of thing. You've been dealing with Alison's condition for what? Six months now? Yes, just over. She has an enormous task, you know. And a major step would be for her to gain Alison's trust. Hmm. That's what she says. <laughs> well, she's not lying. No, I'm sure she isn't. I guess you think it's dumb for me to be so worried. Oh, of course not. But you must try not to feel so anxious. We're watching the situation very closely. Right. 
Well, thanks for your time. Michael! Oh, Michael! Well, you look so excited. What's going on? It's Jody. Well, what about Jody? She's sitting up. She's sitting up in bed. Really? Yes. Catherine got her to do it. We were just talking about how she needed to try harder, and Catherine said she should be sitting up in bed. And she went right upstairs and got her to do it. Just like that. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. And that's not all. You gotta do it. You just gotta do it. Do what? She wants her own television for her room. Or she wants her own television. Catherine wants her own television, say. Yes. The, uh, no, no, Jody, Jody wants her own television. She's sitting up now, and she wants her own television set. Oh. Well, Michael, I would think that you'd be more excited and happy about this. I am. It's just, it's such a surprise. Isn't it, though? It's because of Catherine. That woman can work miracles. Your hair looks great. What'd you do to it? Well, Catherine did it. You will do it, won't you, Michael? You will get her own television set? That's what she wants. She does. First, I gotta get the groceries in the house. Let me help. No, that's okay, I got it. I'm not helpless, you know. I know. Catherine now. She's upstairs doing her meditation. She does it faithfully for one hour every day. While she's doing it, she can't be disturbed. Oh, is that right? Michael, whatever she's doing, it takes a great deal of concentration. She's going to teach me how to do it. Oh, won't that be swell? Michael, what's wrong with you? Look at this stuff. We got organic vegetables, we got health cereals, a carrot cake with no underlined, no artificial ingredients. And this stuff is expensive. If you ask me, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. Soy milk, for Christ's sake. Michael. It just pisses me off that I have to go out and get all this stuff. Nothing is too great a sacrifice or an effort if it will help Jody. You're right. Michael. Could you go up to Jody's room and get her drawings and her notebooks and her report cards, too? What do you need those things for? Well, Catherine wants them. She wants to know all about Jody so she can work with her better. Crying out loud, Allison. I don't know where those things are. They're in the bottom two drawers of her dresser. Could you please do it, Michael? She's probably asleep. I don't want to wake her up. Michael.
excuse me. Yes? This thing with the television. What thing? Bringing a set in and actually hooking it up. What about it? Well, it's ridiculous. Oh? Why? Who's going to watch it? Who listens when you come in and say goodnight to Jody? Is that ridiculous, too? Allison does. I do that for her. Then do this for her, too. Everything that I'm doing is for Allison. And I'd appreciate it if you weren't so critical of every move that I make. I'm not critical. I'm questioning. Then why did you complain to Dr. Turner about me? Oh, so that's what this is all about. No. What this is about is you interfering in a very critical process about which you know very little. Aren't you interested in your wife making progress? Of course I am. Can't you see how well she's doing? I'm not so sure she is making progress. She's downstairs making your breakfast. And she's happy. Her happiness is all based on illusion. I mean, she thinks Jody survived the accident. And you're encouraging her. You coddled her illusion for six months, and you had a depressed, dysfunctional wife all that time. I've been here for two days, and you're already seeing results. Do you want me to leave? No. Then I insist you permit me to do my work the way it has to be done. done. What's she watching? Oh, uh, I turned the set off. She was sleeping. She'll be so excited when she wakes up, don't you think? Well, I am starving. It's been a long time since I've had Allison's pancakes. These are delicious. Thank you. Look wonderful, honey. Catherine thinks we should get a pet for Jody. A what? A little dog like Punky. Mm. Animals are out of the question. What are you thinking about? Just trying to find ways to bring life back into the house, Mr. Overton. She's right, Michael. Yeah, but with Jody so confined, it might be too much of a tease. Or an inspiration. We could get one just like Punky. <sighs> okay. Go to the animal shelter. I'll see if they have one like Punky. And if they don't, I'll just ask them to let us know the minute one comes in. Why not get a different kind? Allison, from what you told me about her dog's death and how painful it was, we shouldn't remind her of it. She does have a point, don't you think so, Michael? I guess so. Will you do it? Okay. Thank you, Michael. You're the most wonderful husband ever. Is he with a patient? Uh, no. Uh, but no, you can't go in there. Look, Mrs. Greenstreet, I just need five minutes of his time. It's important. What is it, Michael? I'm sorry to barge in on you like this, Dr. Turner, but Catherine, I mean, Mrs. Randolph is really going too far. I thought she was doing rather well. She had me put a television in Jody's room, and now she's making me go to the animal shelter to get a dog. A dog? Yes, for Jody. Can you believe it? Michael, Mrs. Randolph, Catherine does know what she's doing. I don't think so. Really? Come on in. Hello, Michael. Michael is concerned with your approach to Alison's therapy. Yes, I heard. Catherine was just telling me that Alison, in fact, has recovered a lot of energy and that her lethargy has disappeared. Would you agree? Yes. 
I guess so. Please, come. You seem unsure. Yes, she has a lot of energy. She's also free of any indication of depression. Well, that sounds good. That sounds very good. Is this true, Michael? That's how it appears to be, but... Allison still believes that our daughter's alive, and Catherine's making it worse. Sorry, making what worse? Her condition. Your wife is actually showing some initial signs of recovery. Michael, returning to normal for Allison is going to be a complex and delicate journey. Now, I can see that you're feeling left out, but you can be very helpful in her recovery. And what's needed most, indeed the most essential ingredient, is your cooperation. Then you think I should do what Catherine says? Yes, I think it would be most helpful. And I should get her the dog. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful idea. Did you get one? She's in the back. <gasps> She's beautiful. Jody will love her. Does she have a name? Well, if she does, I don't know it. Oh, Jody can name her. <laughs> Cute. Mm. Don't you love her? Yeah, she's cute. Let's show her to Jody. Uh, you go ahead. I'm gonna go build a run in the back. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. Mm. <laughs> dogs on the bed in this house. Come on, you little mutt. Whoa. What's that? I rescued you from the pound, remember? You'll regret that. Allison? Allie? You in here? Allison! Will you please be quiet? We're trying to develop some concentration. Allison in there with you? Leon, it's Michael. Not too bad. How about yourself? Well, we've taken on a full-time nurse. Seems to be working out well enough where I think I can finally come back to work. Thanks, Leon. I appreciate it. Well, she's a therapist, actually. Oh, I'd say she has things under control, to say the least. Okay. Great. I'll see you tomorrow. Jody decided to name her new dog Punky. Even though she looks nothing like the first punky. What does Catherine have to say about that? Oh, she thinks it's a good choice. You know, I was looking for you earlier. 
But I guess you were in Catherine's room. She's teaching me meditation. What was it like? It's wonderful. No, I mean, what did you do? We meditated. Yeah, but what's meditation all about? I didn't know you had such an interest in meditation, Mr. Overton. I'm curious about a lot of things. Perhaps you should try a session with me. <laughs> I don't think Michael's quite ready for that yet. You know, I'm thinking about going back to work tomorrow. That's wonderful, Michael. You need to get out of the house more. You're getting too serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. And tomorrow you're on your own. Not exactly. I've got Catherine to take care of me. Hi, honey. Is everything all right? No, it's only the third time I called. Okay, maybe the fourth. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay, I just want to make sure you're all right. Is Catherine there? Okay, bye. Hi, Catherine. Is Allison really doing all right? Of course I trust her. I just like to hear it from you. Okay. All right, fine. I understand. I won't call so much. Okay. I was thinking maybe I'll uh, pick something up for dinner. Chinese food or... Oh, you have? Okay. Bye. It's Michael Overton. I've missed you. Welcome back, stranger. Thanks. Can I buy lunch? No, I don't think so. Not today. I need to get settled in. How's Allison? She's... I guess she's doing fine now that the nurse has arrived. Another woman in the house, huh? Are you sure you can handle it? I gotta get back to work, Charlotte. Well, don't let me keep you. Okay, I'll see you. It really is good to see your face again, Michael. We've missed you around here. Thanks. Pie I smell in the oven? Yes, it is. I know you like to shower after work, but hurry, because dinner's almost ready. What are we having? Beef Wellington. Mm. Catherine made it. She's a gourmet cook. Of course. So where's Catherine now meditating again? Yes. It's really good for the digestion. I already did it. Now go and hurry, because dinner's going to be ready in a minute. Oh, and look what Catherine did to Jody's room. Catherine? Catherine? Two laughing ladies care to join me in a nightcap? Alcohol before bed's not a good idea. She's right, Michael. You have to go to work in the morning. 
Well, she's always right. That's why she's the nurse. Michael. Damn dog. You better hurry, Michael. You're gonna be late for work. Jesus, what time is it? It's time you were up and on your way. Shut that dog up. You should have listened to us. Too much alcohol. What are you doing? Jody's breakfast. Oh, Michael, I need you to pick up some things for Jody's party. What party? Uh, next week. It's her birthday. Uh, Catherine suggested that we have a party. Can you believe it? She's going to be six years old. I need pin the tail on the donkey and. Invitations. You're inviting other people? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be a party without guests now, would it? I guess not. Don't forget the game. We figured out a way for Jody to play, but that's going to be a surprise. Mrs. Greenstreet. Yes, it is Michael Overton. Getting to recognize my voice, huh? He's in Portland. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, yes, it is kind of important. No, I don't want you to refer me to anyone else. Two days. Well, when he checks in, can you just let him know I called? I hope his brother feels better. Massive coronary. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. God damn it! Is everything okay, Michael? Yeah, everything's just goddamn wonderful. I just thought I'd ask if I could help. I don't need your help. Don't you have something to do? Hi, honey. Yes, I got everything you asked for. I'm sure it'll be a great party. Can I speak to Catherine?
This party thing is going too far. Well, when can you talk about it? Yes, but I want to speak to you when Allison's not around. During your meditation. Fine. Tonight. 5.45. I'll be there. Allison thinks you're teaching me how to meditate. Might not be such a bad idea. You could use some relaxation. You're extremely tense. Me? I'm sure it's a result of all that's happened. You've been through a great deal of stress lately. <sighs> I don't understand why uh, we're supporting Allison's illusion. We're not supporting Allison's illusion. We're supporting Allison. I don't have to tell you how fragile she is. I know. I know. She just seems like we're going in the wrong direction. Before I came here, she was floating around in a fog and you were sustaining it. It would have gone on that way until one of you broke down completely. One of us. Don't think you're immune. Allison suffers openly. You contain it. Well, I don't think you can compare my mental state with Allison's. Anyway, where's Allison now? She's up and about. She's working around the house. She's off drugs completely. I agree. She's functioning better. But we're getting deeper and deeper into this fantasy. and I'm just afraid that she's going to lose her whole grip on reality altogether. Can't go on... Pretending that Jody's still alive forever. No. But if I had contradicted her from the start, she simply would have shut me out. By supporting her, she permitted me to enter her world. So? Where do we go from here? What's the end result? We end... by reliving the tragedy. What do you mean? One night, the accident must happen again. You don't mean we drive back to the same spot? No. I mean, we describe it to her, make her remember. But not until we've laid a foundation of acceptance. It sounds too risky. I don't think I can go through with this. Why don't you come home early tomorrow? Be here when I start my meditation at five. We can do it together. With Allison? No, I think for now it's best to do it separately. Okay. I guess. Good. Good. Dorothy. Hi. Uh, I know you haven't said anything, and perhaps you want to keep it private, but 
Did you and Allison decide to adopt another child? Uh, why do you ask? Well, I, I know it's none of my business, but I just want to tell you I'm really happy for you. I think it's a great idea. See, we were driving by the other day, and we saw Allison out walking a child in a wheelchair. Well, we would have stopped, but there was a nurse with her, and, well, I guess the new one's, um, handicapped. But she seemed like a cute little girl. Well, obviously, it's none of my business. I, I just wanted to wish you luck after all that you've been through. Bye. What's wrong? Oh, my God. I'm so happy. What, you're crying because you're happy? Catherine gave this to me. Jody did it today. Yeah, are you sure? Maybe it's one we didn't see before. Probably buried in the stack. Michael, can't you see? This is a picture of her new dog. Yeah, you're right. It's the first creative thing she's done since the accident. The accident? Yeah. Catherine got her to do it. She can work miracles. Well, nothing Catherine does surprises me anymore. Is she up in her room now? Yeah, she's preparing for your session. Michael, be nice to her. Just go with it. It'll be wonderful. She's a gift that's been sent to us. Okay. You're early. That's good. You look upset. What's wrong? It's this, uh, this drawing Allison has. Hmm. She had a good reaction when I gave it to her. She's coming along much faster than I expected. It's just that she thinks... I mean... It's so much like Jody's drawings. How'd you do it? I simply traced uh, some parts of a few of Jody's drawings and put them together in the shape of the new dog. It's pretty clever, don't you think? Something of a shock. Well, I see that. Hey, you look like you've had a bad day. Come sit down on the bed. Let's get you relaxed. It won't hurt, I promise. Relax, you feel like a mannequin. It's not so easy. What are you afraid of? I don't know. You, I guess. <laughs> you don't have to be afraid of me. I'm just here to make you feel better. It does feel good. I'm supposed to. Why don't you take off your shirt?
Welcome back. What happened? <laughs> I guess you can say you had a true meditative experience. <sighs> I feel like I'm floating. Why don't you take a shower and lie down for a few minutes before dinner? I'll be going down to help Allison. never done this. I should have never came in here. Jesus. Poor Alice. It's about time, Michael. I, uh, fell asleep. Meditation can be physically exhausting. Oh, I find it to be quite the opposite. Well, maybe Michael's different. He really worked hard at it. That's wonderful. While you were sleeping, Catherine pointed out another problem we have to confront. Jody's been falling behind in her schoolwork all this time. Well, I guess that's true. Fortunately for us, Catherine has teaching experience. Did you know that? I sort of gathered it. She's going to start tutoring Jody. That's nice. It's an additional duty. We'll have to pay her more. Of course. This means that she'll be with us a while longer. A lot longer, I hope. No, thank you. No. No. No, I don't want to meditate, thank you say, I think, you know, it's not working out very well, and I think it's time for you to go. Simple as that. Make it nice and easy, quick, just walk in and do it. And you look great. Catherine told me to tell you as soon as you get in to go up to your second meditation session. She said she expected you to be very eager. Oh, she did, did she? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not interested in meditation anymore. I'm going to go right up there and I'm going to tell her about it. but I didn't know you'd be this eager. Not eager. At least not for your so-called meditation. Oh. What happened in here last night, it sickens me. Is that a fact? Yes, it's a fact. And I don't intend for it to happen again. I see. No, I don't think you do see. Last night is just a part of it. I'm unhappy about most everything. I don't think you're working out. I think it'd be best if you just leave. Pay for two more weeks. I think that's more than fair. Really? Does Allison know about this? Allison is in no condition to make such decisions. And you are. What is that supposed to mean? You're upset about what you did last night. And you're acting with extreme selfishness. You'd like to forget about it, so you just want me to leave. Disappear as though nothing happened. I have no intention on leaving like that. I don't care. I do. I'm making great progress with this case. This case is mine and no one's taken me off of it. This case belongs to Dr. Turner. I made more progress in one day than Dr. Turner did in six months. I've worked for those so-called doctors for eight years. He's just like the rest of them. An overpaid drug prescriber thinks he's the greatest thing since Sigmund Freud. I want you out of here. And what are you planning on telling Allison? That you asked me to leave because we had sex? Of 
course not. Why not? It's the truth. Because I wouldn't do that to her. That would kill her. What do you care about her? How can you say that? She means everything to me. If you cared anything about her at all, you wouldn't even think about having me leave. I'm making tremendous progress, and you want me to leave simply because you can't control your lust for me. It's not true. Isn't it? I guess you decided to do meditation after all. I'm not going to continue with it anymore. But it makes you feel so good. It just makes me feel tired. I can't agree. Allison, just what do you do in your meditation? The same thing as you, Michael. Really? Tell me about it. What do you mean? I mean, describe what you do. Why should I describe something that you already know about? I thought maybe we'd compare notes. If you want to know, just describe to me what you do, and I'll tell you if I do anything different. Forget about it. I'm not going to do it anymore anyway. Suit yourself, but personally, I don't know how you can give it up. You know, I've been thinking. You were probably right from the beginning. You know, we don't need a full-time nurse here. Well, I've certainly changed my mind about that with all the things that have happened. How could you say such a thing? I just don't think she's doing such a great job. Michael, that's ridiculous. What's wrong with you? Did you have a bad day at work? You know I don't have to work. We don't need money. I could quit work. I could be home all the time again. We could get somebody on a part-time basis. No offense, Michael. But Catherine does things that you could never do. You put too much faith in her. You don't know what you're talking about. Mmm. Smells divine. Michael's decided to give up meditation. Oh, really? He seemed to enjoy it. Maybe you could try it again, Michael. I'd be willing to try it with him again. See, Michael? She's willing to try harder for you. I heard her. Damn dog, I swear to God I'm gonna kill it one of these days. Did you remind him to get the pizza? Oh, that's right, I forgot. We need to get pizza for an appetizer. The house special at the Nimble Hippo in Ashland? It's 20 miles away. We'll warm it up when you get back. I'm not driving into Ashland tonight. It's been a long time since Jody's had a slice of pizza. She's right, Michael. Jody asked for the pizza. All right. All right.
so forward. Did you like it? It was fantastic. It was Catherine. What? She's been encouraging me to take control of things. Catherine? I'm sorry to bother you, but Jody's been crying. I guess you didn't hear her. Oh, poor Jody. She's been asking for her daddy. Michael. Do this. Daddy. Please. Don't leave me. Stop it. Don't send me away, Daddy. I won't. Promise me you'll never send me away. Say it, Daddy. I promise I'll never send you away. take this up to Catherine, and it's her day off, and I thought we'd treat her like a queen for all that she's done for us. I told her I'd make her breakfast in bed, and she wants you to be her waiter. You're kidding. No, I'm not. I'm very grateful, and you should be too. Now take it up to her before it gets too cold. Then I need you to go to the co-op in Ashland. What for? Catherine needs some organic herbal shampoo. I couldn't find it anywhere else. Jesus. Michael. Put it here. How could you do that last night? Mm, looks divine. It was cruel and sick. Why did you do it? Do what? Pretend you were Jody. It was horrible. For whom? Allison benefited from it greatly. She needed to hear you talk to Jody like that. You've been ignoring her lately. Mmm, this is so good. Your wife is something else in the kitchen. Pretty good in bed, too, from all the moaning and groaning going on. Bitch. Pretty hot and heavy, I'd say. That's why you came in. You're jealous. On the contrary. I'm the one that put her up to it. Got me all excited, actually. 
kind of a person are you? The kind that got your wife back. Isn't that what you wanted? No, not like this. You're just like every man. You want everything on your own terms. You should be grateful you have anything at all, considering the circumstances. I have been considering the circumstances. When are you leaving? Do you really want me to leave, Michael? It's not going to work anymore. As you said, I have my wife back. But it isn't the same with her, is it? Mm, I love days like today. I think I'll indulge all my senses. You gonna join me? You're just gonna watch today. Yeah, is Dr. Turner there? Yeah. What do you mean he's not back yet? Jeez. No, I don't want another doctor. God damn it. Yes, I realize this is the answering service. Do you have Mrs. Greenstreet's number? She knows how to get in touch with him. She's his receptionist. Oh, okay, I'll call Monday. help sir you know mrs. Greenstreet works for dr. Turner huh I didn't think so I have to get some organic herbal shampoo Jody's dog. What about the dog? She's dead. <laughs> Michael. She was poisoned. Rat poison. Come on, honey. Let's go <laughs> inside, okay? Please do something with the poor thing before it starts to smell.
She's right about one thing, Punky. You are beginning to smell. Returning to the scene of all your crimes? No, it's more like the scene of your crime. Really? You killed the dog. <laughs> Is that what you're doing, planting rat poison in my closet? Is that what you have behind your back? No, no. You went down to the basement and you got the poison yourself. Really? Yeah. And this proves it. It does? You see, they're covered in red clay from the basement floor. Wait till Allison sees this. Sees what? This is proof you killed the dog. Don't be ridiculous. What are you doing? I'm going to go take a shower with that shampoo you bought for me. I want you out of here. I'm going down right now, and I'm showing these to Allison. Show her what? A pair of shoes you took out of my closet and pressed into the basement floor? No. I didn't do anything like that. Of course you did. And honestly, it's such a pathetic attempt to blame me for something that you did. I didn't kill that dog. You did! You did! And Allison's gonna know the truth. You That's know. enough, Michael. Allison knows very well that you're the one that hated the dog. She won't believe your story, and I know she'll believe mine. Is there anything else that you want? Catherine, what the hell do you think you're doing? I'm going to go wash my hair. I told you already. You know what I mean. Michael, you look very silly standing there holding a pair of my shoes. I want you out of here! That's not going to solve your problem. What? Why don't you just tell Allison that you killed the dog? Tell her you're sorry, you made a mistake. You'll get another dog. It would mean a great deal to her. I didn't kill the dog. You did. The dog is dead. 
And Allison is dangerously upset. You've got to do something about it. God, I hate you. You hate yourself. You think I don't know why you want Allison to remain half catatonic? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't you? Tell me about the accident. Tell me the details. No, leave me alone. You were driving the car. You were going too fast. No. Well, the police report says you were. You couldn't negotiate the turn, but you should have. You'd driven that road so many times before. It was raining. And Jody didn't have on her seatbelt because you didn't insist. But you wore one. You saved yourself by wearing it. It's not true. Of course it's true. I don't remember. <sighs> well, Allison remembers. You think she's forgotten, but she remembers everything. She told Jody to put it on, but Jody started to cry. And you said that it would be all right. Get away from me. Get out of my house. Why were you driving so fast? I wasn't. Why she'd still be alive. Just a little seatbelt in her head wouldn't have smashed against that windshield. Stop it. Please stop it. Not only did you lose your daughter, but your wife is lost in some world where this didn't even happen. You're evil. You're crazy. You're crazy. You don't want to help your wife because you're sicker than she is. No! Face the truth, Michael. It's your fault. No! Okay, six letters. Letters across. Right. Hmm. Three, four across. Oh, what about this one? Three, four across. What's for dinner? Michael, you look terrible. What have you been doing? I went for a walk in the woods. I fell asleep. I'm hungry. We had dinner hours ago. Jody's been waiting for you to come home and apologize to her for what she did to the dog. That's bullshit. Michael. I didn't do it. It's very important that you go up to your daughter's room and tell her that you're sorry. Promise her you'll get her a new dog. Allison. I don't want to talk to you until you do what Catherine tells you to do. I want you to apologize to our daughter. Okay, Allison. I didn't do it, but I'll go up and I'll talk to Jody and I'll make her feel better. are you doing? Michael, are you all right? You're crazy. You're out of your mind. You're evil. You should be locked up. You're overstressed, Mr. Overton. Perhaps you could use some counseling. She's right, Michael. You're a mess. She's not right. She's vicious and cruel, and you got to stop listening to her. Maybe you should go see Dr. Turner. That's a very good idea. Well, that is a good idea. I think I will go see Dr. Turner. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Michael, it's in the middle of the night.
Green Street. It's just me. Mr. Overton, what are you doing? I needed to see you, and I didn't want any excuses. What do you mean? Where's Dr. Turner? Still in Portland. No, where is he really, and what time will he be here? His brother passed away last night. He's not going to be here for several days. What's happened to you? I've had a bad time, Mrs. Greenstreet, a very bad time, and I need to talk to the doctor. That's not possible. It has to be possible. Perhaps we could call someone else, Dr. Wasserman. No! Let's go in your office now. What for? I need some information, and you'll help me. I don't know what I can do. I'm just manning the office. Let's go in there now! Dr. Turner is going to be very upset with you. Oh, yeah, well, I'm very upset with him going away and leaving me with Mrs. Randolph. He's not exactly on vacation, you know. It isn't that he deliberately deserted you. What information do you want from me? Dr. Turner told me that Mrs. Randolph came through an agency. Is that right? Well, a clinic, actually. A psychiatric clinic in Portland. <laughs> well, isn't that a coincidence? Dr. Turner just happens to be in Portland right now. That's where his family lives. Look, I want you to call up that clinic and tell them to phone my house and tell Miss Randolph to leave. I don't have the authority to do that. Well, get him on the phone and I'll do it. I'd have to go into Dr. Turner's office to get the number. Let's go. Let's go! I'll get it. Dr. Turner isn't going to like this. I don't give a damn. Don't you understand what I've been going through? I want Mrs. Randolph out of my house, and if he won't help me, I'll do it myself. Sure, he would help, if only you would wait for him. No. No. He's just going to try to talk me into keeping her. They're in on this together. They're all the same. They're just a bunch of leeches who pretend to help people. Psychoanalysis. The new religion. They just prey on people's fears and misfortune. It's all bullshit. Now get those assholes on the phone. Mr. Babcock, please. Mr. Babcock, uh, this is Mrs. Greenstreet from Dr. Turner's office in Medford. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, oh, yes, that's who I'm calling about. The husband of the patient is here right now. He's uh, very upset. He would like to speak with you about Mrs. Randolph. This is Michael Overton. Catherine Randolph is doing a terrible job, and I want her out. I know she's very qualified. You don't know what kind of a person she is. What would she do? Well, she killed my dog, for one thing, and she blamed it on me. Yes, she did. And she sent me out for pizza and organic herbal shampoo. She's a crazy woman. She hasn't done a damn thing for my wife except turn her against me. And I want you to call my house and tell her to get out and hop on that next plane to Portland. And that's final. Oh. Well, now that that's over with, I can apologize for barging in like this. Sorry, but I had to do it this way. Later, when Dr. Turner learns everything, you'll understand. For your sake and your poor wife's sake, I hope you're right. Michael, something terrible has happened. 
Well, what is it, honey? Catherine's clinic called and told her she had to return to Portland right away. Oh, that's too bad. What are we gonna do? Get along fine without her, just like we did before. But Jody... Jody is gonna be fine. <laughs> Last night she was really afraid and I let her sleep in our bed. No! Catherine said it was okay. Yeah, I'd expect that. Where is she now? Is she gone? No, she's upstairs packing. All right, I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna have a final few words with her. Why don't you go do some knitting and I'll be right down. Mm. Still in uniform, I see. I'm leaving it on for my final session with Allison. No more sessions. I want you to leave this house like you're supposed to. Oh, I'm leaving. But not until my job's done. Oh, it's done. It's over. It's bye-bye time. I'm not leaving Allison in this half-catatonic childlike state. I'm not going to leave her with a madman and just forget about her. It's time for her to face the truth. You stay away from her. I had planned on doing it my way, slowly and carefully. But you ruined that. Somehow I knew you would. Now you force me to do it shockingly and abruptly. What are you talking about? She has to be made to recall that when you crashed the car, Jody's head smashed into the windshield and she died instantly. There's no more time to pretend, Michael. No! Yes. You've destroyed everything. And now it's time to kill the doll. Kill the doll? What are you talking about? Allison's transformed Jody into the doll. She even slept with it last night. Don't do this. It won't work. Yes, it will. Go and look. What? Jody's room. Go on. It's good, isn't it? I found that sledgehammer in red paint in the basement. It's quite realistic, don't you think? And now it's time for me to do what I was sent here to do. Allison? No. It's too much for her. You should have thought about that before you interfered with my work. Allison! No! Are you calling me, Catherine? I have something I want to show you. Do you want me to come up? Wait there. I'll be right down. I won't let you do this. Then you do it. You show her what you did. No! Please! You're so afraid of the truth. Allison! It's time to face the truth. Leave her alone! This is what really happened that night in the car. You've been living with a lie too long, and Why Michael has. You do this? So, you're leaving. Get your bags. Oh, you little mutt. Looks like you're going to have some company. I guess I better do something with the poor thing before she starts to smell, huh, Bunky?
Oh, your taxi's here. Let me help you. Now, don't let him overcharge you. Let me get the door. So Catherine's finally gone. I guess you were right all along. We never really needed her. No. And despite whatever she did or said, Jody never really liked her. I know. I had a little talk with Jody about that. I thought she'd be upset. About Catherine leaving, but she wasn't. As a matter of fact, she said the nurse often frightened her. I don't doubt it. How would you like it if I cooked you dinner? Yes, please. That'd be very nice. What would you like? You decide, Michael. I'm not good at that sort of thing. Of course, honey. I'll take care of everything. What is it, Michael? It's Dr. Turner. Dr. Turner. Hello, Michael. This place is beautiful. How much of the land is yours? Down to that corner on the left, and over to that fence you can see on your right, and then all the way back to the foot of the mountain. Gorgeous. How's Alice? She's fine. Much better than three days ago when Mrs. Randolph left. I can imagine. May I see her? Sure. Right this way. Hello, Dr. Turner. It's very nice of you to come all the way out here to see us. How are you feeling, Alison? Oh, I'm fine. Michael's been helping me again. Now that Catherine's gone. Yes, I'm sorry that didn't work out. You wouldn't consider someone else? No. Absolutely not. Right. Then maybe Michael can show me around a little bit. I'm intrigued by these old farmhouses. In fact, my wife was thinking of buying one up on the Green Springs. Of course.
Did a complete remodel last year. You wouldn't believe the kitchen. Yes. Very nice, Michael. I really just wanted to have a word with you alone. About what happened with Mrs. Randolph. No. Oh. Sure. I figured that. You know, she killed that dog she forced me to get. She poisoned it, tried to blame it on me. She's trying to turn Allison against me. Incredible. Well, not so incredible once you get to know her. She was a vicious, hateful, arrogant person. She even tried to get me to be unfaithful to Allison. She wanted me to do it so she could use it against me later. It's terrible. I don't know what to say. When she took that doll down from the attic, that was the end. What doll? It was Jody's doll. Got it for her when she was two or, or three, because it was just the same size as she was. Miss Randolph dressed it in Jody's clothes. I made her take it with her. The doll? Yeah. She killed it. I don't quite know what you mean. She smashed its head in. For God's sakes, don't you even know what I'm talking about? How did she leave? Did you drive her to the airport? Well, I put her in a cab. And you told the taxi driver to take her to the airport? No, I didn't tell him anything. I just put her in the car with her bags. And the doll? Yeah. Look, I don't even want to talk about her anymore. I don't want to think about her. I understand how you feel. No, you don't. I tried to tell you and you wouldn't listen. That woman should have never been sent here. No practice to send her. You don't know what she tried to do. What she might have done if I hadn't stopped her. What did she try to do? Tried to kill Jody. She tried to blame it on me in front of Allison. It was my fault. Jody would cry whenever Allison would make her wear the seatbelt. What could I do? Allison would say, "Drive slower, Michael. Drive slower." I did drive slow. Sometimes you're not thinking about it, and you go a little faster. Of course. This is Randolph. She wanted me to suffer. She had a doll in her arms and the blood. Where was this? It's upstairs. I mean, on the stairs. What did you do? Couldn't let her go on with it. Allison was going to pieces. So I stopped her. How? I hit her. Had to. Afterward, when when it was over, it was time to go. She understood. Put her bags in first. Where did you put her bags? Put the hammer in too. In the cab? Yeah. That's right. Out there, parked beside the dog grave. And that mound of dirt out there, that's where you buried the dog? throw a tablecloth over it. She dressed it in Jody's clothes. You understand why I had to use a tablecloth? Oh, of course. Um, 
I thought I heard Jody crying. I'll go see what she wants. Oh, I can do it. No, it's all right. Alison is a warm, loving person. And I know that whatever you did, you did it to protect her. I'll always protect her. Michael, Mrs. Randolph is still on your land, isn't she? No. No. She left in a cab. I put the suitcases in myself. But if she were still here, you'd want her to be taken away, wouldn't you? You're damn right I would. Well, then, I think we should check it out. Just to be on the safe side. It has to be done. Okay. Good. Then why don't you go and see Alison? And, uh, I must make a few important telephone calls. You don't know how it was or you'd understand. Oh, I'm sure you're right. Would you like anything to eat or drink? No, thank you. Actually, we've all got to get going. Both you and Michael. He has to see some people, and we don't want to leave you here alone. Oh, I can wait for him. I've waited for him before. I'm not afraid of being alone. You may have to wait quite a long time before he comes back. How long? More than a few hours. But what about Jody? Well, I didn't want to alarm you. But I've called for another ambulance to take her to the hospital. Why? Well, she needs additional treatments. You wouldn't like her to get any worse. No. You'll be with her in the next room. You'll even be able to sleep there. I will? Oh, then I'll have to pack some things for Jody. I'll wait for you. I'm going to drive you to the hospital myself. Will Michael be coming? No, he will be going with the police officers. Why? They want to talk to me about Catherine. That's right. Oh. I won't be long. Allison? Yes, Michael? I love you. I know that, silly. Well, let's get this over with. The sooner we get started, the better for everyone. It's the right attitude, Michael. Don't worry about Alison. We'll take good care of her. And this time, there better not be any more Mrs. Randolph's. No more mistakes.
you hear that? I haven't heard of that since I was a little boy. Shh. It's there. It's the Earth's heartbeat. It's there after all this time. It was always a secret of mine that I wanted to share with Jody. Of all the things that I wanted to tell her, and I never did. That's the one I regret the most. <laughs> joy and need we have walked hand in hand. Now we are both resting from our travels, the still countryside below us. Around us the quiet valleys incline, already the air grows dark. Two larks fly above us into the dreaming mist. Come here and let them soar alone. Soon it is time for sleep, and we must not stray from this solitude. Oh, tranquil, spacious peace, so profound in the twilight. How tired we are of wandering. Is this, perchance, 